So blended learning for the students, what the main thing that it did was it allowed us to have more time to spend on group projects. And having a time when everyone in the group can be there and be working on it with the support of their instructor nearby and their TAs uh, is pretty huge. So it's a lot easier for the groups to meet. So they end up spending a lot more time working on the group project. Being able to spend that in-class time interacting with the groups is pretty helpful too. I spend almost every class period connecting with the, the different groups. Uh, one thing we do differently in our class that we didn't do before is we have uh, in-person grading. Um, so it's a, just an in-person critique, you know, you did this, this, this. And we don't spend any time writing up grading evaluations. And so because it's just one-on-one, -on -one, it's really fast. And it's a good chance for students to ask questions. So we do that for all of our work, the individual projects. Uh, we check in uh, in person on, on what they've done and then make sure that they've got the main concepts. But in a group situation, it's, that form of feedback is really useful uh, because you can really create a conversation. So you look at the stage for the group project and then you're able to interact with them back and forth about what they've done and what they could do differently next time and how it relates to engineering as a whole. So the groups are a support network for the students. And, you know, in a class this large, it's easy to just kind of get lost in the crowd. We actually set the groups together so that we create little mini communities within our entire class. And so what I tell the students on the first day is, you know, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of you, there's not so many of us. So there's sort of a, there's an answer chain. Where can you get the quickest answer? And, you know, I say, okay, first you go to Google uh, with your weird error message you got from your CAD system. And usually there's something to do with there. Secondly, you can search our videos, you know, type in those keywords, see if that pops up in one of our video lectures. And then you've got your group, you know, you've got three other people with their phone number, you can call them and say, hey, I'm stuck on this, you know, how can I get out of this? And then you got your TAs, and then you got me. So, you know, groups create that support structure that let people get answers more quickly. And, uh, you know, and they, day one, they've got three friends in class, so that's good. It's a lot different than it was before blended learning. Again, like, you know, not having a 45-minute lecture in there frees up a crazy amount of time. You know, we do a quick review in the beginning, and that's just to create another touch point for all of those concepts that they learned in the video lectures outside of class, get everybody on the same page. And then we go around and do that individualized critique style grading that I mentioned earlier. And then once that's all done, once I've met with the groups and once the TAs have checked in on all of the uh, all of the assignments and, you know, we've filled in all those gaps and misunderstandings, then there's still a lot of free time in the class, you know. And during that time, that's where I'm able to connect with the students that are struggling a bit, you know, that come from a background where they're trying to catch up and just learn the basic computer skills. So I, I spend probably a disproportionate amount of time with the 10% that are, that are trying to catch up. And then I also spend a lot more time with the students who are really excited about this and excelling. So, you know, it gives me a chance to connect with students who are doing their own side projects or who are excited about exploring a certain type of engineering. And I can have the kind of conversations that you would have with an advisor, and that can organically come up in the class just because we have more time.